Do a take your kota katoa. Just a few little ground rules first. If you don't know, we're already going to be live streamed. So the whole world is watching us this morning. So we're going <coughs> to uh, be aware that this meeting is being streamed and the video will be publicly available on YouTube. Members, could you please remember to speak clearly into your microphones and only one speaker at a time for clarity. Please make sure your phones are turned to silent. For the public's information, please be aware that council is minimising. Is it supposed to be minimise? Yeah, it is. It's use of paper, and councils will use, be using laptops and other devices during the meetings to access the agenda and other meeting information. Number one, apologies. Two table apologies. Councillor Larry Baldock, Councillor Bill Granger. Anyone want to add anybody for lateness? Pini. Have a mover and a seconder. Do you want those? Councillor Cloud. Kuhidaki. Public forum, the stage none. Acceptance of light, uh, late, late items. Any late items? Good, none. Confidential business to be transferred into the open. No confidential matters we want to bring out into the public. Great, none. Changes to order of business. Any changes to the order of business? Slight changes that the uh, Chair's report is going to go down a little bit later. 
declaration of conflicts of interest. Anybody wants to declare? None? Great. So the business uh, brief chair's report. So I think the first thing I want to do, <coughs> even though it happened in October last year, was in September, is con congratulate from this table here in this forum those of you who were successful in the last elections. <coughs> Starting with uh, Mayor Tien Big Pal, Mia Te Kia Koe Te Rangatira, Ko Koe Ra Ki Whakai Tia Te Mona, Te O Rata Ringa Ringa, Ko Koe Ra Te Tangata Tika I Hena Ra Te. So I just acknowledge the Mayor, Mayor Tien Big Pal, that the, the people have spoken. They put their hands up and uh, he has been the one that has been chosen. Our role here is to support him, encourage him. All leaders need encouraging. Affirm him. When he makes a decision, we stand beside him as one. We are the followers of our leader. Even though we mightn't always agree with what he might come to, his decisions, out of respect, we say that you are the chief. Uh, we endorse you. And we are not kiakot. Kiakwe e To the other councils that were successful, each and every one of you. My congratulations on behalf of the Tangata uh, Whenu. Uh, good fresh faces, bit of youth, young. Got, got Calvin, uh, <laughs> Calvin laughing, but... Uh, and uh, a good mix of genders. So again, it's just a, a privilege to, to welcome you here to this forum, to acknowledge you, and while we might hold different views and opinions as we go through some of the issues we're going to be tackling, let us uh, remember that uh, let us remember that uh, what's the most important thing in this world is people, people, people. Not a Maori, not a Pakeha, not a Chinese, not an Indian, but it's people. So with those uh, thoughts in mind, I hope we can have a great three years ahead. You do good in the next three years, you'll get another three. <laughs> if not, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention is our treaty process. Uh, we signed our deed of settlement uh, in Ngāti Dangi in 2012 and we still have not settled yet. And our issues with our neighbours, uh, Hauraki, had a hearing between, before the Waitangi Tribunal last year. They came with a report, the report of their, their decision that they made, and that uh, the Crown was in breach, in a sense, in the way that they endorsed uh, Hauraki having mana whenua in Tauranga Mona. So our next stage now is to try to engage, and they recommend that uh, the iwi engage in a tick and a process to try and resolve the matter. So that uh, is another challenge for ourselves here in Tauranga Mona. That maybe we can get together to be able to sit together and say well, we want to go together as a Mona, but at the end of the day, each uh, iwi will make that determination themselves. So it's a long journey. It's not yet over yet. And I'm pretty sure that there'll be many more challenges to follow. Uh, uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention is uh, what's happening in our environment today in our community in terms of the, the violence and uh, child abuse because uh, unfortunately we were the ones that uh, had one of our mokopuna that was uh, suffered at the hand of an abuser and uh, we had him at uh, Heidi Nimarai, a little five year old so it's uh, really sad uh, to see what you read in the paper Sunny, before you in front of you, on your own marae, one of your own. And so uh, <coughs> the challenge is first of all to, to uh, be aware of who lives in our community and how we can best help them to make this a better society for all of us. And that's a big challenge. We have to do it for ourselves as Māori and we need your support to be able to make that happen as well. So we have the child abuse, we have domestic violence which is right. And, uh, of course, what's happening with the escalation in uh, violence in terms of firearm use in Tauranga Mona. So tonight we look forward to be at a meeting led by the two mayors, Mayor Powell 
and uh, Mayor Weaver uh, with the police giving us an update to exactly what's happening and what they plan to do. And of course there's the voting that you're going to be having today in terms of the Bergen Wall. And when we look around the street, the majority of those people that are on those streets belong to us. And so we need to be involved in some way in making sure that uh, your decisions have a cultural context to them, whether it's a positive one or a negative, that's fine, but as long as you kind of at least say that you have looked at it, you have thought about it, you have discussed it, and uh, this is the decision that you've come to. And we know that uh, if we let it go, that it'll get worse rather than better. And so we, we want to support whatever decision you come to, and I'm sure the Tonga Defender Collective will be doing that. <coughs> So that's just something I just wanted to raise. I don't want to be sound too negative at the very beginning of our meeting, but that's life today. That's what's happening in our city. These are the people that we are talking about belong to us. And so, kia kaha, kia maia, kia mana mo nui tata. Let's be strong-hearted, doubt-hearted, persevere, and at the end of the day, be kind one to another. Kia ora tata. So can I have a move and a second for my report, please? Councillor Salisbury, Mayor Powell. All in favour? Anybody against? Thank you. So the recommendation is that the Tonga Defender uh, and Tauranga City Council Committee receives the Chairman's report. Our next item is 8-2. Quarterly morning report is going to be presented by Mr. Carlo Ellis. Kia ora, Carlo. Oh, more in Atato. Tuatahi kei te mihia tu ki a koe hui, tō tātou Waimairi, ko koe i roto i tērā tūru, hei awhine a mātou, anō reire tēnei te mihi, ki a tātou katoa, tēnei te mihia tu ki a koutou katoa tēnei wā. I just want to acknowledge hui, it's good to have you in the chair's seat again, and guiding us through these processes in between the council and our tangata whenua, so yeah, we're privileged to have you along to guide us, so thank you. And good to see everybody else here. Um, Happy New Year. Um, we've got the quarterly monitoring report in front of you. Um, I just wanted to sort of say a few things, an introduction to it. Um, first of all, we've had a few changes in the Takawangi unit, so, um, and there's a few more changes to come as well. So Meridina has moved over to semi-retirement. Uh, we've managed to uh, retain her in a training role and an advisory role, so that's excellent. So she's actually next door um, doing more cultural connections training, um, which continues to prove very effective and popular. Um, so I uh, just want to acknowledge her contribution over the years. And uh, we're lucky enough to welcome a new member as a kaiarahi, which is Josh Takani. Uh, so he's here with us observing today. Um, he's, a, he's a week and a half in and he hasn't handed in his resignation, so every, every day when he walks in we, we say a sigh, a little sigh of relief and it's good to have him here. But, um, you know, without blowing his trumpet too much, he, he's added value straight away and it's been a big relief for our Takawanga to um, be able to fill that space again and so we look forward to what he's going to be able to contribute alongside the rest of us. Um, a couple of... A couple of other things that, um, just to, to keep front of mind, is conscious that with our committee representatives last year, we had a great start, and we had four really well-qualified uh, contributors in, in those four committees. Um, two of them, for various reasons, aren't going to be able to continue this year. Um, so Anthony Didinui, who was on our Finance, Audit and Risk Committee, um, has had work pressures come on him that's not going to allow him to continue in that role. So we're in the process via the rangapū of, um, of 
getting another person to, to put their name forward for that committee. So that'll that'll happen in due course. We expect that we should have a name in front of you um, early March, if not mid-March. Um, and then we've also been working through with Dr. Wayne Bielby, who's got some um, personal issues where he probably won't carry on. He hasn't actually finalised that, but uh, Marty and I have been talking to him and there's some things that we're encouraging him to put family first. So he's been a great contributor and we've been very lucky to have him there. So we'll probably go through a process soon of um, looking for somebody to take up those reins. The other thing too, just to keep front of mind, is probably, and something that Takawanga is grappling with is, uh, as we've been working with the organisation on how we engage with tangata whenua, we've been using three basic principles around uh, go to tangata whenua early, and earlier in the process than we ever have before, face-to-face uh, -face as often as we can, and ensuring all of our information is accurate. And we're getting a lot of success on a variety of different projects by, by sticking to that. And we do appreciate we've had a lot of support from staff being willing to, to um, do things a little bit differently to try and achieve that. So we're going to continue on that path. It is the guidance that we've had from Tangata Whenua about the, the key uh, principles with regards to engagement. Um, it is going to um, bring forward some challenges. So uh, the more that we have those doors open and the more that we include those, those discussions and that consultation up front, um, the more uh, we're demanding from some of these volunteers and other representatives out in the Māori community. So we're just going to have to be conscious about how we balance that off so that we um, can get the best information out of them to plug into our processes. So they're just things to keep front of mind. They'll, they'll come up a bit more as we move through the year. And Takawang is working closely with the Rangapu in particular to work out solutions for those issues. Other than that, you have the report in front of you. And um, I, I'd prefer just to um, assume that you've had a chance to read it and just to work through and take questions if that's all right. Kia ora and through you, Mr. Chair. Um, Carlo, in the, on the fourth page, page nine, or the second page of the report, under Iwi Hapu Management Plans, I see that <coughs> there are still quite a number of our hapu or iwi that are either under development or ready or still to progress. Um, I guess it's been a wee bit of a worry because this has appeared right throughout the last three year, um, Trionium, and um, it probably goes even back further than that. Um, where are we at with that, and what are um, Takawanga's plans, if you like, to liaise with them in order to get them moving along, progressing? Kia ora. Um, look at the uh, the dance that we have as Takawanga is to respect that hapu have their processes and and readiness that that happens at different times from when we may have. Um, but what the plan basically is that we're working with each of those different hapu to try and encourage them to to be able to facilitate those plans. Um, for example, yesterday we had a, a meeting at Farero with um, Ngai Tukarang and Ngāti Kuku um, where there was a presentation from members of the marae around what their aspirations are and um, that gives us the opportunity to say well actually there is some uh, funding here to flesh that and turn that into a, a solid plan uh, for the hapu. Uh, so we take those opportunities. Um, we certainly raise it on a regular basis. Um, and for us, we'd be keen to have them completed sooner rather than later because it just gives us clearer direction on where each hapu is at and what their aspirations might be. Uh, time and time again, what we see with the ones that are done is there's lots of synergy. So there's lots of things that uh, the hapu is screaming out to progress that actually fits in with a lot of the plans for, for the council as well or can inform some of the plans where council's looking for that. So certainly encourage it. 
Uh, we're respectful in how we work in with those hapu because every hapu has a different level of capability and capacity. Um, but yeah, as I say, yesterday we made some good progress with Ngāti Kuku with you know, having another one that, that hopefully will be progressed pretty quickly. Uh, kia ora, Mr Chair. Uh, sorry for my late list. Um, thank you, Carlo. Um, just on the plans that are not there, but the plans that are there, how is Council uh, progressing those, and, and how has it been engaging with, with Hapu on those plans? So, so Takawanga meets on a regular basis with each of the, each of the Hapu, um, and most of the hapu have got something that's progressing um, one of their high priorities, but that's in discussion with each hapu. Um, we have been gone through a period where we haven't had a full complement in our takawanga, so it has been a bit difficult, um, but essentially we, we discuss that with each individual hapu and try and progress different things with them. So for example, things like te pāho are, are things we need to pick up in this year, uh, many hapu are interested in the RFR discussions that um, have been reignited. Um, and also, I mean, uh, probably an interesting thing in the report is that from a council point of view, um, the museum's probably not a live discussion right at the moment, but from a tangata whenua point of view, they've been clear with us that it's a live discussion from tangata whenua. So we just try and keep those things live as well. Yes, in terms, I understand you've met with Ngāti Whakaui Ki Maki too. Um, that meeting, that's quite complex. Uh, uh, into uh, discussions with, with Ngāti Whakaui because they have a comprehensive claim and there's a number of entities that have already settled in Ngāti Whakaui and there are some that hasn't. And of course you're going to get some internal conflicts, obviously. And I'm well aware that even though I represent Waitaha, I, one of the claimants and actually one of the negotiators in Ngāti Pukaui claims. And just to give you a broad outline on that, the claim that uh, Pukaroa Horuafata has gone through, they're worth 300 million now because that was a, a, a spatial plan that was created in the 1880s. And they won that back off the Crown. So there's a number of remedies to have to understand in terms of that whole regional development. They also have another entity who's got $29 million worth of investment just down here, down in the Manawa, uh, the, the, the Manawa settlement. So it's understanding all those, how does that fit in with the whole regional plan, how that's integrated, and what are the next claims uh, coming on hand. The claims that I'm doing, and they're uh, basically to do with social, cultural and environmental um, development and not necessarily with the, the land issues which we've got a bundle of them. We want to deal with that in the court so we've negotiated with the, we're going through AIP to negotiate that with the, the Crown. The question I'm asking you is has your staff got, um, what are you doing about understanding those treaty settlements because there's a lot of remedies in those settlement in all the hapus, in Iwis that needs to be understood because those remedies are acts of decree. And they could be, in order to avoid litigation, we'll put it that way, <laughs> that uh, they need to be understood uh, because there are a lot of developments that could be integrated in the whole spatial planning. So just... Yep, certainly a challenging space. And uh, yeah, we, we caught up with Ngāti Whakaue Ki Makitu, I think, the day before yesterday. Um, I, gu I guess the current state of play for them is they've lost a key member that was uh, a key driver in Maria Horn. So obviously with their passing, um, they're in a difficult space at the moment. So the purpose of the meeting was, was really to um, reassure them that we're there to totoko them to find their feet again through that part. So just in terms of where that current relationship is, is that was the discussion a couple of days ago. In terms of the treaty settlements and how much of an understanding, um, we've definitely read through them, summarised them and got a basic understanding of 
um, opportunities and how we can support um, and um, work with the outcomes to to um, get get further good outcomes. Um, the reality is we are only four people across 17 iwi and hapu, so in terms of takawanga, we're pretty limited in capacity from that regard. So we are reliant on each of the iwi and hapu guiding us on what they would see as palatable to be advanced and what they see as priorities. And that's probably where we've had our most success um, in terms of listening to tangata whenua so that they can determine their priorities and then working inside council to try and bridge that gap between the two different worlds to, to see what opportunities come from it. So we've got a, a basic understanding, but the reality is, are we going to be able to get dive right, right into those complexities? We've got a pretty small team to be able to do that. Um, and it is very complex. So one of the things that came up a couple of days ago is that lots of those things are right across Western Bay District Council, Regional Council, and a whole variety of other agencies. So that adds another layer of complexity. Um, Ngāti Pukau Kimake too hasn't really got a claim. The claimants are, are in Ngāti Tunuhopu and the Yeni claim and the Kaituna claim and all that. It's not their claims, it's actually, you actually need to deal with the committee nui on Ngāti Pukaui who has the, the mandate. Um, kia ora. I think a, a, a good way for understanding it too is um, helping the councillors get their head around the legislative requirements in that. You know, uh, once you understand that, we might be able to move forward with some decisions. Because that, you know, that's complex issues all, all around the legislation, eh? My other, I'm uh, just go, I'm going on to the Māori housing development, and uh, you know my my um, my biggest bugbear about all of that has been infrastructure, and there's other <coughs> other reports here that um, you know like uh, the Waiati project, Tauriko West. Another one somewhere, oh, the Tatumu project, where there's infrastructure stuff going on. And I'm hoping that Māori Land, once you've uh, talked with the Māori Land Trust and the Hapu there, that uh, they get some opportunity to maybe, because some of those, those uh, infrastructure things are running through their land, I suppose. So um, hopefully there'll be some opportunity there for the Māori housing, you know, because that's the biggest thing we actually need is infrastructure. Māori land. Most, I'll say 90% of Māori land is zoned rural and all of that. And so the council is not bound to, to put infrastructure there as such uh, in here and, and around the suburbs. So it's my bugbear. Just an update in regards to some of that. So, yeah, sort of brought up a real wide range of stuff there, bro. <laughs> But, but but good point, and, and what you're saying is at the end of the day, Māori housing is what Tangata Whenua are trying to advance, and whichever way in those different projects, there might be opportunities to do that. Uh, there's a number of conversations in play at the moment, um, and probably the two that I'd highlight is that a while ago there was a, um, a report presented to Council about uh, development impact fees and how those might there might be some special consideration for Papakainga in particular, but also Māori land. Um, it's been a bit long, but uh, we do have Anna Thurnell who's working with us on developing a report. She's currently on leave, um, but in the next month or so we should be able to get that finalised. And at the same time, as, as the Rangapū will know, we've had discussions about the Rangapū actually having access some, to some re, uh, resources to actually develop your own independent report on what that might look like and what the opportunities might look like. So, two positives. Uh, and and uh, when you're talking to the land trust, you know, I, I'd say some of them would be amenable, you know, about this race stuff. You know, if we're going to get infrastructure on there, we're, we're pretty well practical and say, well, yeah, we know we've got to pay for it. You know, so and some of the trusts have got money, but some of them haven't. But then, so that's where they need help somewhere along the way. Kia ora, Mayor Tembi. Uh, kia ora, Chair. 
Uh, Carlo, thank you for that. I think that the points that have been raised are really, uh, really valid. Um, the, the challenge for us sitting here today is that some of the areas that you're talking about are not TCC areas. And it's um, pretty obvious that um, it's dawned on me that we need to, uh, to have a, a bit of a corridor around the structure of what's happening here in terms of having repetition meetings that may end up in silos. Because what would worry me is that we, um, you go and compose this similar meeting with Mayor Gary Webber and the outcomes are quite different to what they might be here. Now, as you know, um, Mayor Gary and I are working on many things together, um, uh, called Tahitanga, if you will, and uh, none the least of which is this meeting tonight. But it's um, suddenly dawned on me that we may need to, uh, to we, we, it might be expedient, if nothing else, and also very practical and sensible if we had meetings of this sort together with the Western Bay Petit District Council, because the areas that you're talking about are in fact their areas and not ours. Um, and I think there could be some convergence of conversation that would be um, sensible and might move things ahead more positively, if you will, uh, if we were able to do that in some way. Yeah, I think uh, smart growth is uh, designed to make that happen. So whether it has or not, I don't know who what an update on smart growth where it is today and what uh, they've achieved. So Carly, maybe you have a bit of response to that. Yeah, I think initially, um, in terms of that synergy across councils, absolutely an opportunity. So uh, something that Tangata Whenua raised and now at Rangapu constantly is that there's a different set of rules on one side of the road compared to another. And Welcome Bay is a great example because you've got blocks on either side of the road that sit in our different um, local authorities that are actually the owners of the same people and they have different rules to play by and different resources at hand. So there's absolutely an, an opportunity to synergise um, the councils, especially on those borderlands, let alone where they cross over. And a small complex in the Māori world, because those same owners, they might actually... That's a good example, having two blocks on either side of the road, but actually there's lots of different places. I think from a council point of view, the opportunity to unlock undeveloped Māori land is huge. And from Tangata Whenua's point of view, it needs to be at their pace and understanding the barriers and the challenges that they have with developing um, Māori land. Because it, it does, it has a whole different set of rules from any other land. And that's, the, that's why we need to have a different set of rules to try and help people overcome those barriers. Good, uh, Councillor Avery. Uh, so is it, if I understand you right, you're coming back to Council with options so that we can totoko papakayanga better in the future. Um, do you think the area is being resourced well enough at the moment? Um, I, I think um, in terms of the report that Anna Thunel is going to be able to do, that's gonna, it, it has the opportunity to come in, come back to you in somewhere around April. So I think that's already in play. But I think there is going to be another opportunity to actually um, resource an independent report. Now, the value with that is that at the moment, if council goes out and asks these Māori land trusts with all their variable capabilities, you know, we, we'll get what they're willing to share with us, but it's not always with confidence that they would want to do that. So the value of having an independent report is to utilise our partners to be able to get more of a steer on what is able to be done out there and what's realistic to unlock things. So if I use an example, you know, the middle ground tends to assume that if we um, do a discount on diffs, that's going to help. But the fact is, if you don't have $18,000 cash up front to do that, then you probably don't have 9000 either. Um, so sometimes the value is allowing those solutions to be put forward and then working our way through that. That's an area that could do with some support and resourcing. Yeah, uh, let's go back to page nine and we'll just go through this report page by page and so we don't jump all over the place. Page nine, everybody happy? Page ten, any comments? Page eleven. Page twelve, any questions? Page thirteen. 14, I think we've had a bit of a quarter on the Maori housing development and that's going to be an ongoing one and quite a complex one. 
page 15, page 16, page 17, page 18, page 19. Oh, that's great. I suppose uh, when you talk about page 19, the Torah of West, I know that's not quite right, but uh, I think Torah can be uh, proud that they've attracted a new uh, industry to Torah of Mona. $400 million development happening out there at uh, the crossing, so uh, congratulations. Oh, sorry. Uh, j just correct me if I'm wrong. Is uh, uh, half or, or or some part of Tauriga, Tauriga West um, getting the, the boundaries have been changed to uh, to TCC? Yeah, that was part of the original discussions. Um, we haven't seen too much progress there recently, so I don't have an update for that at the moment. But it was originally part of the discussions. But I know that everything's been put on hold. So there is a group there that are the mana in that area that have been dealing directly with them. Yeah, pretty much. Kia ora, Pini. Oh, you were saying, OK. Councillor Cloud. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, the boundary changes between ourselves and Western Bay, they're not on hold as such. That they're still progressing, um, my understanding is. And I think there's about... Well, Chief Executive will be able to clarify. I think there's about three specific areas that are going to be included in that boundary change. And, and it all makes quite logical sense. Um, kia ora, Mr Chair, through you. Uh, just in regards to the Tutumu block, um, in regards to... Uh, the challenges and opportunities in regards to multiply own Māori lands is that perhaps in the comment that Mayor Tembe makes in regards to our partnerships in regards to Regional Council with Totem City Council and Western Bay, that also we um, view this as well in our relationships that we are engaging is that we also look at the projects that we have. And I'm referring to AFTI um, in regards that when, when we silo our kaupapa such as, is that we need to probably group and give a, a good overview uh, engagement, but also an overview how that's happening for the Rui. Uh, we are getting, I suppose, uh, some friction and understandably, uh, from the growth and the development in Tutumu from some of our Fano trusts. And I'm just wondering whether at some stage we can come together to talk about how we move together and going forward with that. Kia ora. So with uh, Tutumu, there's a, there's a working party that's established with those hapu and iwi. The, the tricky part, and I think what you're raising, is that the land trusts also need to be part of that discussion. So we'll continue to encourage that. And, um, and it is part of what um, we find challenging is, is that line between when hapu have a voice over an area and when the landowner actually has their property rights about what they should be able to say. Generally speaking, what Takawang have supported is for land trusts to be able to work through their property rights and, their, and those processes. Um, but absolutely hear you and will continue um, to advocate in that working party to involve land trusts as well. Kia ora. <coughs> if we go back to page 12, Kobu Riraroa Valley, you should have had this little extra page. So if there's anything on that extra page, you may comment about. Now's the opportunity. None. Thank you. Okay. Oh, sorry, mate. Can't see you. Uh, um, just, just a, a question of uh, the councillors. Really, uh, do you guys realise the difference between the Maori land trust and the hapu obligations under the RMA in that? 
just uh, you know, because that was mentioned, uh, that's part of the, the understanding uh, of around legislation in that, because they're, they're, and the complexities and that stuff like that. And, and to tell you the truth, you know, we're not all together as a hapu and as a land trust, and that's, you know, that's pretty hard, and we're all the same people. But we'll see if Carly can answer that. Well, really, Uncle, was, was, I'm just trying to make them aware of the complexities again and, and the questioning why I was asking about uh, helping them get their heads around the legislation and, uh, and what it means, because uh, basically a Māori land trust is under Article 3, I think it is, all the way around, and the hapu is under number 2, and we take care of RMA stuff, and the hapu uh, looks after, I mean, and the land trust basically looks after the aspirations of the landowner. And if the landowner, the Māori, those Māoris want a high-rise building and the hapu's uh, basically against it, then we've got a bit of a problem within ourselves. Councillor Hughes? Uh, personally, I'd, I'd really appreciate a workshop um, to address this. I, I feel like that would be really, um, a really helpful thing. So just just from a staff and operational point of view, um, the best people to to actually workshop through that with you is our legal team. So essentially, um, they should be the ones that are analysing a situation and providing you with a report that has the advice around that. But there will be some value in in them also giving you an overview of that, so we can have a talk to them about that and, and alongside us. And um, also for Rangapu members. Um, and councillors if you are or aren't aware but we have successfully lobbied with um, governance to have a series of seminars for uh, councillors to keep developing the understanding with, rela uh, with tangata whenua relationships um, so that'll be starting to come into play over the next few months um, and hopefully starting with having Justice Joe Williams come to present to you guys soon so, so there's some stuff happening in there just to try and improve that what I, the other comment I would make is it's actually something Takawanga battles with is that we've got a half of the table here that's been here for 100 years each and we've got another half of the table that's here for three year chunks and so one of the real tough parts about that for Takawanga is that um, these guys are trying to progress things and, and to be fair we take ages to resolve a whole lot of things but every three years, they've got to stop and repeat themselves. I think the only way around it is what you're talking about, Heidi, is you need those workshops to be able to bring yourselves up to speed and, and keep um, a flame alive with thinking about those things. But just be conscious of that, because that's where a lot of the um, friction can happen, is that these guys having to repeat themselves, but you guys also want it and to be having a desire to learn and grow your capacity in that area too. So I just thought I'd bring that up as the... It's something pretty obvious that happens. Kia ora, Maru. I want to to um, support the the mayor's position in in terms of that and get a full understanding on what uh, collaboration is, what's um, spatial planning is, what's integration, how that should all come together. That collaboration, integration of. of because at the end of the day, I wouldn't call it global warming. I'll, I'll call them, there will be some environmental changes. That's going to be very expensive. Um, so you, legislation's going to change. Your national policies, your regional policies, and your district plans are going to have to appease the, the uh, environmental changes. Now, the environment has got no boundaries. That's why... That's why they've got to collaborate. The three councils, they've got to collaborate. All those councils who hold the, the, the acts will have to integrate and see where they can sort out how they're going to deal with the environment. Because uh, managing growth is quite different from market-driven growth. And that's, I have a problem with smart growth is going down the market-driven growth instead of managing growth. Managing growth is to predict the utilities that you require, the infrastructure that you require for development, not the other way around. And of course, that's a big issue that we have to come to terms with. So integrating and having uh, uh, a wānanga about these things is highly important. So we're all on the same uh, wavelength.
Oh, kia ora, Maru. Any further questions? Kapoi. So we can have a move and a seconder that the quarterly monitoring report table has been tabled and received. Seconder. I see that in Mr. Council Clout. All in favour? Okay, the recommendation is that the Tauranga, Whenua, Tauranga City Council Committee receive the report of the order, quarterly monitoring report to February 20. 83, item 83, the Rangapu Mana Whenua report. Kia ora, report um, giver. Pui, your final report is it? Ah, kia ora to you, Mr. Chair. Not only to I can nay, you don't get to cope up or ten nay ra, it to a take at me how to kia queer. Motor moto faka moimiti, moto faka toki a mato, or ten nay rope, or ten nay hui huinga kotahi, or ten nay tau, not a da, it a rangatida, kate me how to kia queer, ten a queer, ten a queer, ten a tatu katoa, a memo, ten nay comiti, ten nay rope. Uh, in noho nei i uh, mō ngā take o te kaupapa um, o te rā i wangini ia, ia tātou te kauni hira me te rangapū mana whenua o tauranga moana nō reira e mihi ana ki a tātou katoa mihi mai, mihi mai, whakatau mai tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou tēnā tātou katoa e mihi ana hoki ki ngā Kai mahi i te tumuaki mati tēnā koe ngā kai mahi o te tauni hera tēnā koutou tēnā tātou ana ki a koe ngā, ngā tangata whenua mati kai te mea te ki a koe hoki. Um, I'll sit down now. <coughs> so, kia ora everybody and um, you have the report there in front of you and before I launch into the first item, just to say that um, <coughs> as Hui Kākahu said, this will be the final time that I will be presenting the report to this committee as the chair. What happens in the future is up to the Rangapū, Rangapū um, in terms of the makeup of this, this committee moving forward. Um, and as I've stated in the report, I am retiring after 12 years as the chair and 20 years with the Rangapū, the Tangata Whenua Collective, and, in, and I'm sure there was another name we had 20 years ago. And um, along with uh, a couple of other members here, a few members here today, namely Fiti Maru Matire, um, the founding members of this <coughs> of our rōpū. And so <coughs> I do with, this, with some regret why I've retired, but there are other good reasons, um, both practical and personal reasons why I am retiring. However, I will stay on at the stage as the representative for my hapū, Ngāti Tapu. Um, our current member is getting on a bit, and he, he has resigned, so I will fill the gap until I find someone to replace me from the hapū. Whether it's six months or six years, I don't know. <laughs> However, so having said that, um, and uh, first of all, I, I support the uh, Chair's best wishes to all the councillors who have been successful in the last um, election, so tēnā, tēnā koutou katoa, and um, look forward to the, this particular triennium in terms of our relationship developing even better and stronger and moving forward in that way, at least for the next three years. So, um, tēnā koutou katoa. <coughs> um, Matiria Duncan is the person who has been selected, appointed by the Rangapū to take over, and she is sitting at the back there. Um, and
and uh, I'll be spending a bit of time with you over the next month or two in making it a nice, easy and smooth transition and being there to offer any advice that I can as she moves forward in, the, in that role. So, number one. Now, the, <coughs> the report is short, but I believe it generates a heck of a lot of corridor discussions and food for thought and leading it into engagement in just about every form. And I hope that this is something that we have identified as very relevant and very much a priority right from the very start, being this is our first standing committee meeting, and we have highlighted it right from the beginning of our relationship for this year. The first one talks about <coughs> the makeup of of, um, of this particular committee in general, and a small mention about the other committees. So I'll start about the I'll start with the other committees. Again, thank you very much for the allowing us to engage in those four subcommittees. It was a wee bit of a, it was a bit of a journey um, over the last three years, but uh, we finally got there, uh, and we do need to complete our um, appointments on all all committees. <coughs> However, there was one there was one small point in in that um, we still believe that it would be good for the relationship and moving forward into the future and progressing that our members have voting rights on those committees. And we've said that right from the very beginning and up front. So I've actually jumped ahead to number three now, but that's okay. Māori, we're allowed to be a bit flexible. Um, to go back to the standing committee, which is the important one. <coughs> As it states there, I'm not going to read it, you can all read what, what, what the um, proposal says. What that means is in the past, and right from the beginning, it was a committee that was set up of, of um, a 50-50 relationship, partnership in the relationship, and but it had a, a set number of members. And it's, uh, I believe it's always been six in total, the mayor plus five, the um, rangapū. Generally, it started off by having a kaumatua plus five. That sort of morphed into a six, because kaumatuas these days tend to do the other stuff as well. And um, we feel that in order to have a more meaningful relationship, as number one, that being everybody sits around the table, like the council does in, in your full council meetings. We believe that um, that will give a more direct uh, consultation process with all the members of the Rangapū, and to be able to get the opinions of all council members at that particular time. <coughs> now, we know that this committee as it stands now, is a recommendatory type of committee, and you and the you councillors who are members of this committee take the decisions made at this committee to the full council for any decisions to be made or ratified. So, where I guess that gives you a bit of an inkling of what our our next report will say. <laughs> Let's move on to the decision making through this committee, and we believe that that would be a good move that could possibly help that along, that process along. Um, Kia ora, Pudi. I Kira mean, Pudi. sorry. Yep, Pudi. sorry. Uh, we realise that the biggest sticking point is the numbers, sticking right out there like that, so, you know, and that's why we'll put in there with respect to a review of the terms of reference for the policy, so... You know, we know that numbers is a bit of a problem like that. Okay. So that'll be the, I'd say, the big big item issue that we should discuss over that. Yeah. Thanks, Fiddy. <coughs> well, Fiddy's already raised that in terms of the numbers. It does seem there is an imbalance there. Um, 
in terms of standing orders, I don't now ha know how that would work. There would obviously need to be a change to the policy, as I've stated in this report, and as Fiddy said, it needs to be reviewed in that sense. Um, I'll go through the whole report and then hopefully that will generate discussions amongst us today and for people to give their opinions on what we've raised as proposals. I've commented on the, um, the committees. Moving down to another biggie, number four, the right of first refusal. Um, very short explanation, the right of, ref of first refusal is a policy whereby where council have surplus have properties that are surplus to their requirements because they have deemed that to be so and therefore when they take it out to the public to dispose of in terms of selling we tangata whenua on, and we as the rangapū of mana whenua on behalf of all tangata whenua and hapū and iwi in our raw here are saying that we should be offered the right of first refusal before we get into all the nitty gritty details and points that are going to be raised, also to say that up until the stage we have talked about that the right of first refusal also includes the a market value that is put on the transaction, a market value of today. Not a value when treaty settlements were set or when the land was taken under OPAT or, or public works or whatever, and market value today. That is the way that the discussions have gone along in the last three years. This has been on the table, I believe it goes back even further than the last triennium, back to the one before that when we first raised it, and it was because the council did have a policy in place, but we felt it, wasn't, it didn't go far enough and we wanted to include RFR as part of it. We hope that this will generate huge discussions. We, because we've been engaged with council for a while now, well, quite a while in our opinion, and it's gone through a stage of maybe this is possibly would be the third council makeup that we're sitting with in discussing it. However, we are the same people as um, Carlo, um, noted earlier, we're here for 100 years or 100 months or whatever, whereas every three years there is always a change within council. So every time we start a new triennium, we seem to take a couple of, one or two steps back and get it going again. We want to get it going fast. We want this council to be the one that makes the decision in our favour, and I'm going to put that up front. Right? So, probably a lot of more discussion, uh, meetings, working, um, um, having workshops. Carlo has said that he's already plugged in quite a few for us this year, and we need to progress this and, make, and, and, and move it forward. So, having said that, that covers the points of my report, Mr Chair, and I open it up for questions and open discussion. Tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. And this being my farewell, my pūra pūra ki kei te mihi atu ki a koutou katoa, tēnā koutou katoa. Ka huri. Kia ora, puhirake, so uh, ma mi ki a koe, mo tēnei tō mi ki atu uh, pūro o whakamutunga, tēnā koe. Yeah, personally, uh, particularly items three and four, they seem to be small things that uh, iwi are asking for. So to me, that's, yeah, I don't know why council wouldn't support that personally, uh, but we'll, we'll have those debates. Uh, item two, yeah, yeah, sorry, bro, I didn't uh, meet you before, but is it Fiti? Fiti, Fiti, Fiti order. Yeah, like you, like you mentioned, if, if the numbers are in balance, then uh, you'd win all the votes if, if, uh, <laughs> if the Rangapu decide something. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but 
yeah, definitely keen to have the conversations and, I mean, from uh, the committee reps that you've put forward, typically they're much more experienced and experts in the field that we're discussing than we typically are. So it would be good to have the input and I don't think it, uh, to me it doesn't undermine democracy because you still have the council and that's where the decisions are uh, ultimately made. Any further questions? Kapoi, none, thank you. Oh, you have a question? It's not really a question, I just wanted to uh, express to uh, Puiraki our collective um, thanks for your many years of service, almost decades. And, uh, you know, I just want, I've really enjoyed, yeah, I've enjoyed, so, so did I, I've really enjoyed my relationship with uh, Puyuraki, he's taught me a lot, and um, he's, he's always been very positive, uh, forward looking, and uh, I'd like to think that the work that you have started will continue. Um, I certainly welcome uh, Matari to the chair. Kia ora. Uh, welcome, and looking forward to working with you as well. So, kia ora, thank you. Thank you. Hello. Can I just make one last side swipe? In the, in the Māori world, there's, uh, there's three parts to democracy. There's the, uh, the elected, the anointed, and the appointed. <laughs> we, seem to be, we seem to be go by anointed and appointed. <laughs> Did you say anointed or the annoyed? <laughs> Get a colour. Kia ora, just to add a few comments to um, Puhiraki's um, report and first of all to Teitoko um, Kelvin's sentiments around thanks for for um, the years of service and to reassure, I know there's been a few questions in the background about will we be organising something so you will hear uh, about something coming up just to recognise that service and we'll make sure the councillors are invited to that as well um, if you'd like to attend. Um, just in regards of of the um, other items on here, um, and just just because I think there's a risk that sometimes Tangata Whenua can put forward a report, everybody smiles and goes away and nothing happens. Um, I think there's signals on on uh, what Tangata Whenua are looking for in that relationship going forward. Um, an update on right of first refusal for Tangata Whenua is that we had a, a report come up to the councillors earlier on and they voted unanimously to have that workshop. So we're just looking for a time to have that. So that'll be an opportunity to um, bring out those discussions again and to be able to bring everybody up to speed and to a level of comfort about where you might land. Um, in terms of the committees and then the move to the committee of the whole, I think in terms of the... TCC committees, we just need to see whether that's something that the councillors would like to have a discussion about with the voting rights and then figure out when that discussion is going to happen. Um, and also with the standing committee of a whole, I think there's more discussion to be had. I think um, Fiti's respectfully bringing up the numbers issue. So I think it's a signal at this point in time and there's more discussion to be had on, on at both ends as to how that might work. But I think it's also a shot of support from the Rangapu about having seen previously the subcommittee structure that didn't have everybody around the table and the success of the committee of a whole structure I think it's a shot of support from Rangapu about how that's been progressing as well. And I'll, I'll cheekily raise that, uh, you know, even with voting rights, don't forget that will be 11-1. So uh, the numbers thing we can work out, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, just to, just to make sure we've got a few points on the end of those pencils to make sure it's going to progress and we don't get to next time around and hear the same report with the same things. Kia ora. Oh, kia ora. Um, uh, Chair, thank you. I just wanted to uh, reiterate uh, what Calvin said, really. I mean, we, we met before, just so everybody knows, in my office, just to go over a few other things. Um, Puaraki, it is very important that we recognise your service, and I'm pleased that Carlo is going to organise an event of some sort because it's long and very valued service to uh, the Tauranga City and to the community. So, uh, so thank you for that. And, um, We'll, we'll, we'll get on to that soon, sooner rather than later, I'm sure. Um, Matero, it's going to be great to have you on board. It was a pleasure to meet you properly this morning. And, um, you know, we look forward to the, the service that you, can, you will give us as well. And I think, um, if I may be so bold, it's actually really good that we have a woman 
a wahine, and a wahine tower at that, uh, coming in to this role because, um, you know, I, I feel I'm, I'm really sort of, my mind is occupied with what's going to happen tonight at this meeting. It's a, it's a big hui for us. And uh, I read this morning that two 93-year-old, um, uh, I think, men went to the headquarters of uh, Black Power and the Mongrel Mob in Napier, knocked on the door and wanted to have a, uh, have a bit of a hui with them on the spot. And I think uh, when I'm looking ahead at some of the issues that we've got to face, it will be nice to have a woman's leadership. This is not in any regard an indictment on you, Puraki, at all. But I think the evolving issues that we've got here in Tauranga, it would be good to have that. You know, we need a bit of healing as well as some strength at the same time, and women can bring that to us. So uh, we look forward to your contribution. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just thought that was a protective shield, a human shield. <laughs> exactly, right. <laughs> I have a lot to learn. Um, so, look, we look forward to, um, to, to uh, where we're going with this. I am really occupied after this meeting, the first one of this sort for me, that we are talking um, about issues and potentially seeking resolution on issues that are out of our, out of our boundary, and I'm talking about the physical boundaries. And I'd like to, to talk to uh, the Chief Executive and my fellow councillors about what we could do about that to ensure that we have these meetings that do move forward and I believe they do need to move forward. This one step, or two steps forward, one back, uh, Puaraki has I've, I've taken a board, and I think we just need to keep progressively moving forward. I think to do so, we might have to have a slightly different composition. I don't know if that's possible, and if so, how we can do it, but I'm just keen to have a conversation about what we might do to have a, a group that can actually make decisions, because clearly we can't on behalf of the Western Bay Plenty District Council at this time. And indeed the Bay Plenty Regional Council when it comes to some of the environmental things um, that um, uh, that Witty was talking about earlier on. So anyway, I don't want to make it too complicated, but I, I just think we might be making decisions in isolation of actually being able to move things forward. I just need to understand that better. So anyway, kia ora and thank you, um, Puaraki. Kia ora, thank you uh, for those. I just want to don't talk about that, add to that, and uh, acknowledge uh, Puhiraki's uh, commitment to the cause. And uh, he gave a whole lot of reasons why he decided he wanted to stand down, but he left out one very important one. And there's something that probably all your councillors and the mayor's going to face in the next three years. There's people that strain the rocks and stones and that, you know, you're doing your best, but people out there don't really appreciate what are you committing to. So Pukitake is uh, he's no different. He's been to the hospital a few times to get some of the knives pulled out, but that's OK, he still survived. And no doubt you're going to feel a few knives in your backs over the next three years. Maybe uh, Council Hollis has already felt a couple there, and uh, he's, he stood strong, and that's what we all have to do, stand strong in face of uh, uh, conflict and stand on your convictions and your sincerity of who you believe you are and uh, what you're trying to achieve, not for yourself, but for the wider community. So, uh, yeah, we are to kia koe pui, and uh, welcome Matiri. She's another two. She's a long time as well. Fought the battle in the house and outside the house, you know. So we look forward to her being there, and uh, I don't know whether I support the mayor saying, that, you know, it's good to see a wahine here, but, well, we, the, peop the people have spoken, so we have to accept what the people say. So uh, me at the Kia Koto. So uh, <laughs> I want to move around the second day that we have uh, the report has been tabled. To Moved by the, the writer himself and uh, seconded by Councillor Salisbury. All in favour? Carried. So the recommendation is that the Tonga Frina Tauranga City Council Committee receives the Rotenpu Mana Frina report. Discussions of late items? Nil. So the next meeting is going to be at Romai Marai, which is at uh, Welcome Bay Road on April the 22nd, April the 22nd. Mark that in red ink in your diary. We need your presence. So we are, I want to just congratulate you all in, in terms of uh, keeping your corridor succinct. We haven't been anybody waffling on at the first week, so that's been good. And so we have finished quite well ahead of time. <laughs> so, uh, 
we've, we've asked the kids to bring forward the kai. It's going to be out here at 11 o'clock. But just before I close, I just want to make a couple of comments. I'm looking around the room and uh, I'm thinking, is there a code of dress conduct in the council and standing orders? Mr. CEA. Well, there is, um, but obviously it has a degree of flexibility to it, and others interpret it, you know, I guess, differently. I only make that comment because when I look around the room, I can only see four people. It hold on to this ancient symbol, male phallic symbol of male dominance and power. <laughs> two Maori, two Europeans. So who's going to be the last one standing? He'll be the big chief. It's not to be used like this. Yeah, I just wanted to make one other acknowledgement, and uh, I didn't want to mention it in my report, because you might have thought I'm talking about a bit of nepotism, but I just want to acknowledge my son-in-law here, so that you'll know that I have a son-in-law, and his name is Joss Takani, and that uh, you, you uh, have received him into your whare, so I'm expecting you to take care of him so that he doesn't come back to my whare and moan about how he's been treated here in the council. So we look forward to hearing good reports from Joss Takani about what's happening with him and with you in this council and the progress that we're making in terms of cross-cultural, not just between Māori and Pākehā, but across all the borders, because in our uh, um, citizenship ceremony every month we have, we have a wide range of ethnicities that have chosen to make Tauranga Mona their home. So we, we belong to the world, because the world has come to us. And so with those few words, uh, look after each other. We belong to each other. Kia ora tato. So Pujirake, because it's your last week, as chair, you can say karake. Thank you. Nōreira tēnā tātou katoa. Mō te mutungo tēnā hui o te rā, kei nō i tātou. Let us pray. E pā e tō mātou mātou nui tarangi ki e tapu i tō ingo. E pā e whakawhira ana mātou ki a koe mō tēnā. <coughs> mō tēnā wā mō tō manākitanga ki a mātou ki a hui mai i tēnā i rā. I runga i, tēnā, I ngā take o te kaupapa. Nei, he wanga nui i a tātou. Ki a tau, ki a tātou katoa. Te atawhai o tō tātou āraki a hui karaiti. Me te aroha o te atawa, me te whiwhinga tahitanga ki te wairua tapu. Ake, ake, ake. Amen. Kia ora tātou, rangi mari.